Uh, hello, guys. Um, this lecture is going to be a short one, and it's not going to be with the students, just me. And the problem is, is that um, the beginning of chapter 10, lipids, somehow I managed to not to record that on for both uh, sections 001 and section 002. So uh, I will also, I will, so this will be a short one because there's, there's a small, small um, number of slides that are, are, that need to be discussed. But uh, for section 001, so uh, chapter 10, just write this down, is covered on November 4th, 6th and 9th. So, uh, so this lecture is for November 4th. That's the one that we're missing. I will also send an announcement um, to make sure that you um, uh, have it in writing. And uh, for section 002, uh, this lecture was on November 9th on Monday. And so uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, borrow a small segment from section 001 and combine with this lecture. So for November 9th, the lecture that I did not record, now there'll be two parts, part one and part two. So part one is coming from this recording and part two is coming from the other section. So hopefully this is clear. Now, again, I will put this in announcement but on, the other, but on the other hand, you don't really need to worry about any of this. It's just my own organization of this. All you have to do is just by, go by the dates and chapters in, in your um, review of these recordings, of these recordings. All right. So let me share the screen. Share the screen. Okay, this is chapter nine. Chapter nine, lipids. So basically we just need to discuss uh, slide one through 12, slides one through 12. Uh, so let's, brief, let's start with um, what lipids are. We'll talk about biological roles of lipids. We'll talk about structuring properties of different kinds of lipids. So specifically, we'll talk about storage lipids. Uh, we will also talk about um, structuring properties of membrane lipids and structuring properties of signaling lipids. So three kinds of lipids we're gonna talk about. So here's just an overview of some basic uh, structure, structures of them. So these are very diverse let me increase the sl slide size, go into presentation mode. So, uh, so basically the, uh, the simplest um, member of this is a, is a fatty acid. Fatty acid where you have a hydrocarbon chain and a polar carboxyl group. Polar carboxyl group. So we talked about, for example, um, how these form different aggregates, right? How soap works. So I already mentioned that, right? So the way soap works is your hydrocarbon chain is going to be inside, right? And the polar head group is going to be on the outside, like so. and the soap and the dirt like that. So this is polar head group, polar. Head group. Now this is hydrocarbon
hydrocarbon tail. Hydrocarbon tail and that black thing is dirt. So, so the polar head group in, interacts with the molecules of water on the outside and these structures are known as micelles. We're going to actually look at, at the structure, uh, at uh, some more properties of micelles, micelles and uh, in uh, a little later. All right, so these are fatty acids. Now, uh, glycerol is the um, basic unit of um, types of um, lipids known as uh, uh, triglycerides. So, um, uh, another way to draw this will be to use bond line, bond line formulas, right? So there are three hydroxy groups. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna esterify each of these hydroxy groups and with fatty acids, right? Fatty acids, you can see some of them are saturated, some of them are unsaturated, which means there are double bonds. There are double bonds and this is a saturated fatty acid. And they vary also not in the type and number of double bonds, they also vary in the length of the fatty acid in terms of how, how many carbons. Now, another main type of lipid are known as sphingolipids. So these are sphingolipids. Uh, so you can see here the structure in orange, uh, known as sphingosine. Sphingosine, now you, uh, there is, you can see the difference is in sphingosine compared with glycerol with that one is that uh, there's a fatty as there's a fatty hydrocarbon tail but it doesn't form an ester with this hydroxy group right so this hydroxy group is all by itself and then instead of the middle hydroxy group here we have a minamina group a mina group which can be can, can be um, isolated and will form an amide and there's also a polar head group right here which can also be different all right, so what else do we have? We have uh, sterols. Now this molecule is cholesterol. Cholesterol has a um, characteristic structure of, of four cycles, four hydrocarbon rings, A, B, C, and D, six, 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 and five membered rings. It has an alkyl side chain. So this will be referred to as steroid nucleus, and it has a polar head group. Polar head group is a hydroxy group, now, uh, it's not very polar. Uh, it's not as polar, for example, as a phosphate or carboxylic acid, which is deprotonated. So this actually protonated, right, at physiological pH. So, uh, um, so sterols uh, are still lipids, right, but they don't have such strong propensity to organize themselves as, for example, as fatty acids. And uh, also there's uh, other types of um, steroids that, uh, um, we're going to talk about for, uh, which have drastically different structures. So for example, ubiquinon shown here, this is a mitochondrial electron carrier, also known as coenzyme A. All right. So uh, biological functions, uh, so storage of energy. So I told you that uh, especially these um, triacylglycerols, right? The structure here. Uh, they they have lots of uh, stored energy because hydrocarbon. Um, just think of petroleum industry, right? It's all hydrocarbon. So there's a lot of energy in CH bonds. Lots of energy in CH bonds. Basically, you will burn a CH bond with oxygen. Oxidize it with oxygen to form a CO bond. CO bond, and so um, you will um, 
re release lots of energy by doing so. By doing so. And uh, um, insulation from the environment. Now low thermal conductivity, right? So hydrocarbons do have low thermal conductivity. High heat capacity, so they can absorb heat. Mechanical protection, kind of a little bit of greasy, right? So greasy, they can absorb shocks. Uh, water repellent, um, because of the hydrophobic, obviously they keep water away. For example, in birds, right? Excessive wetting, a bird can um, swim in a lake and then just simply pick up and fly, right? And so uh, it will not be too wet to, uh, to, to perform such a, um, uh, such a move. Now, uh, prevents loss of water via evaporation. So buoyancy control in, in marine mammals, for example, right? So uh, just think of, um, um, of, uh, of whales, right, of seals, right? So there is um, uh, a lot of fat for buoyancy, right? And they can control that by changing the, and controlling the type of lipids they have. So uh, membrane, right? So we'll talk about actually next chapter, chapter 11. It's all going to be about this uh, cell membranes. Uh, cell membranes are extremely important because they separate cells, they separate the organelles in the cell, right? And there's a lot of functions of cell membranes. Cofactors for enzymes. So we'll talk about some of these structures as well. Uh, many of them are signaling molecule, molecules, growth factors, for example, steroid hormones, right? So uh, they diffuse through the body and uh, transmit the signal um, uh, paracrine hormones uh, so these actually local and steroids actually body wide right body wide so you know many of those for example sex hormones right testosterone estradiol so those act body wide uh, pigments Color of tomatoes, carrots, pumpkins, antioxidants. So uh, as far as pigments, you can see here, there are these birds, birds which utilize uh, these structures. Whenever you see highly conjugated system like this, that means that the system will absorb visible light, right? Absorb visible light and there will be beautiful colors associated with the species. And so you can see here, there is this, um, this conjugation here extends onto the carbonyl group. And here there's no carbonyl group, right? No carbonyl, which means we're gonna shorten this extension. Uh, we're gonna shorten the conjugation and that will result in the change in color. So from red, we will become yellow. All right, classification of lipids. So, uh, uh, the two main categories, I guess, that uh, we can um, utilize for classification. So, lipids that contain fatty acids, right? So, we refer to them as complex lipids. They can be separated into storage and membrane lipids, right? So, trace glycerols, for example, and membrane lipids, components of cell membranes. And lipids that do not contain fatty acids. So cholesterol is one example, right? And we talked about vitamins, pigments, and stuff like that. So, and here is some attempt to classify those. So storage lipids, trace of glycerols. And uh, so you can see the glycerol, three fatty acids, lots of energy. Now, and these are membrane lipids, membrane lipids. Now there are uh, phospholipids. Phospholipids, those that have phosphates. Um, uh, so, uh, so, so these, again, these are glycerophospholipids based on glycerol and also sphingolipids. So both sphingolipids and glycerophospholipids can contain phosphate. And you can see here, 
So glycerol, two fatty acids, phosphate, and then some kind of alcohol attaching it to some other group, some other polar head group. Sphingolipids is kind of similar. Sphingosine, fatty acid. Now remember, this one will be attached to the nitrogen of the amino group of sphingosine. And then you have phosphate and colon. So colon, remember colon has this structure. It's a charged, charged molecule. And uh, so for glycolipids, um, so, so these are, for example, uh, sphingolipids. So sphingolipids uh, don't necessarily have to have phosphate. They can just have uh, sugars. They can have sugars and they can have a single sugar or um, ditri, tetra, or oligosaccharide. And uh, so for glycerol, uh, so these are uh, sulfolipids. These are much less common but instead of the phosphate, they may have actually, they actually have sugars with the sulfates on the sugar hydroxy groups. And archaea, archaea are well known for the formation of um, uh, this kind of uh, ether type uh, linkage. So if these are esters, triacylglycerols are esters, so archaea will be, um, not all of it, not all of these, but some of these will have ether lipids. Ether lipids and actually they're actually additional glycerol units attached to them. All right, so let's start with fatty acids. So these are the simplest type of uh, lipids. Hydrocarbon chains uh, contain between four and 36 carbons. Um, now something to that you can remember easily, almost all natural fatty acids will have an even number of carbons. And that actually comes from the process of their biosynthesis, which you will learn in biochemistry too. So in the biosynthesis, the biosynthetic pathway only produces in, in fatty acids with an even number of carbons. And um, uh, most natural fatty acids are unbranched. And there are now saturated, no double bonds between carbons in the chain, monounsaturated, one double bond, right? So this will be monounsaturated. So this is no double bonds, saturated, monounsaturated, and there are polyunsaturated. So he, these ones have more than one double bond in the alkyl chain. So uh, now uh, you can, uh, there are many different, way, different ways to name fatty acids. So one way, for example, is through using systematic name. So shown here is a fatty acid that has 18 carbons, right? So it's a decanoic acid, actually. There's a mistake here. Now the mistake comes from uh, the fact that there's a double bond. There's a double bond and a double bond which tells us that this should not be an A, this should be an E. Decenoic acid, decenoic, so it's a decen. So six, nine, so sort of cis, cis, it's a cis double bond. And then you count the number of carbons starting from the carbonyl, one, two, three, four, five, nine. So it's a cis, nine, octa, decenoic acid. Now there's an alternative way to do that so uh, now there's a common name, oleic acid, that it acquired at some point. And there's also delta numbering of carbon skeleton. It turns out that actually it's important that there are double bonds at this position, position three, one, two, three. And so these type of uh, fatty acids cannot be synthesized, but they're very useful for us. That's why fish oil is very useful for us. And so that's why there's another way um, that people another way to, uh, to name these fatty acids based on the omega. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm taking it. Uh, hold on a second. Let me, okay, let me do the omega, and then I'll jump back to delta. So omega numbering of carbon skeleton, so 18, 
then uh, you indicate number of double bonds, it's one. And then how many carbons it is away from the terminal end? So this will be the omega carbon, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine carbons. So it will be omega nine fatty acid, right? So it's described location of the first carbon of the alkene in relationship to the terminal methyl. Sounds here, looks here. Sorry, uh, um, start, start, nobody starts here. So uh, delta numbering of carbon skeleton. Now, uh, so this basically will, uh, with this one, you will just indicate at which carbon your double bond is, right? So you don't need to um, use the whole parent name anymore, octadecenoic. You just basically indicate number of carbons, which is 18 then uh, column and then you put the one which is the number of double bonds right and um, an indicator that actually um, the double bond is located at position nine so this will be 18 not eight, 18 one delta nine And uh, so uh, as far as, uh, so these are gonna be um, such saturated fatty acids. So you can see uh, uh, carbon skeleton. This is number of carbons. Now these ones, zero indicates they're not double bonds. So all of these, all of these are saturated. Um, you can see that the melting point in general increases as you increase the number of carbons, which kind of makes sense because of the intermolecular interactions, right? Remember we under walls interactions, they increase as the surface area increases between the molecules. And so as you increase number of carbons, the surface area will increase and the melting point will increase. And similar to, so, similar, uh, to that is solubility, right? So you can see both solubility in water and benzene actually drops as you increase the number of carbons. Same idea, um, intramolecular interactions increase. Now these are um, unsaturated, some examples of unsaturated. Uh, so um, for example, 16 carbons, one double bond, uh, delta nine, so it'll be cis-9 hexadecenoic acid and palmitolic acid, that's the common name. And uh, increase by two carbons. Now this is octadecenoic acid compared with hexadecenoic acid. Um, octadecadienoic acid, diene, right? From the diene because there are two double bonds and uh, also known as linoleic acid. And this one is uh, my favorite, as you will see. Um, it's a beautiful fatty acid, starting material for a lot of um, hormones, uh, um, glucotrines, prostaglandins, thromboxanes. So it has a 20 carbons and four double bonds at these positions, five, eight, 11, 14. So <clears throat> this is a systematic name. Systematic name. Um, so omega-3 fatty acids, remember uh, these are essential nutrients. So um, uh, these ones are actually uh, components of fish oil, right? And uh, so we actually need this one. We, we need this one uh, because we can synthesize uh, pentanoic and hexanoic, hexanoic uh, from the, as long, if you start by uh, taking, by uh, using the fatty acid with the double bond on, pos on position three, then you can size, synthesize the rest of them, right? but we cannot synthesize fatty acid with this double bond at this position, omega-3. Um, 
All right. I think uh, your uh, your next lecture, right? Um, lecture for section 001, November 6. This is where we pick up. This is where we pick up and go to that lecture and you can continue. For section 002, remember there will be second part to this. There will be second part to this and um, uh, look for that and it will be labeled uh, for November 9th, November 9th, November 9th, chapter 10. All right, that's all I needed to say today <clears throat> to fill this gap. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know, shoot me an email, but hopefully it's so uh, clear and straightforward. I'll see you soon.